Okay then gang, so now we've seen how to add new recipes using this form over here and that adds a new document to the Firestore database and we've seen this behavior online and offline as well and this all works. However, what I'd like to do now is show you how to delete recipes by clicking on these trash icons. So when we click on one of these, I wanna delete that recipe. Now, there's a couple of ways I could do this. The first way is to attach an event listener to each one of these icons right here. And when we click on one of those icons, it deletes that recipe. But I don't wanna do that for two reasons. The first reason is that it means we're gonna to have to attach an event listener to every single icon on the page. And if there were a lot of recipes, then that is quite a costly thing to do, and it's not great for performance. The second reason is that when we add a new recipe, it means that we're then also gonna to have to attach a new event listener to the new trash icon on that new recipe. So again, not best for performance if we have to do that all the time. Instead, what I'm gonna do is use event delegation. And what that means is I'm gonna attach just one event listener to the div that surrounds this entire section, all of the recipes. So that div in the HTML is this div right here with a class of recipes. Now I'm gonna do that so that if we click anywhere inside that div, then it's gonna fire a callback function. And inside that callback function, we're gonna check if we actually clicked a delete icon. If the event source was a delete icon, then we'll delete that recipe. And this way we only ever have to attach one event listener to the surrounding div instead of multiple to the icon itself. And also when we add new recipes, because that new recipe will be inside the surrounding div, we don't have to worry about attaching new event listeners. It's all gonna work. So then, let's do this. First of all, I wanna take a look at the HTML of this. So if we go over here to UI, we can see this is the HTML, right? And this is the trash can. So ultimately, when we click anywhere inside the wrapper, we want to check if we've clicked an eye tag, this icon right here. Because if we have, that's when we want to delete the recipe. So let's go back to DB and put in this functionality. I'm gonna do a comment, first of all, that says delete a recipe. And underneath, I'm gonna say const recipe container is equal to documents.querySelector and then it's gonna be this thing over here inside the index recipes right there. And I'm gonna paste it in right here. So now we have a handle on the wrapper of all these different recipes. Now what I'm gonna do is attach an event listener to this container so that if we click anywhere inside it, then it's going to fire a callback function. So we'll say add event listener and we wanna to listen to the click event and then we wanna fire a callback function which takes in that event object when it happens. So what I'm gonna do for now is just console.log the event object. And now what I'm gonna do is come over to the service worker and update this up here, site dynamic to V5. So I'm gonna save that and come over here to application, skip waiting, and I'm doing this so that we can recache the db.js file and we get the up-to-date version. Then I'm gonna refresh the page, come to the console and click over here somewhere. I'm gonna click on the trash icon itself and we get this event object load to the console because that's what we did over here, right? So if we expand this and we come down and find the target, which is here, and inside that we wanna look for the tag name. So go right to the bottom we should be able to see the tag name and we can see that it's I because it's an I tag and it's in capitals. So what we want to do is check when the event fires, is this the tag that we clicked by using these properties? First of all, the target, then the tag name. Now, if I clicked over here, for example, then expand this and go down to target and then right down at the bottom, we wanna to go to tag name again which is here, we can see it's an image tag. So we only want to delete the recipe when the tag name is the trash icon, or rather, when the tag name is an I for the icon. So let's do that now. I'm gonna comment out this. Then I'm gonna do a little if check. So I'll say if the event dot target dot tag name is triple equal to I, and it was a capital I, that's when we want to delete it. Now we want to get the ID of the recipe that we want to delete. And remember, in ui.js, this is the template 
and we have the ID right here because we output it dynamically when we received it from the Firestore database. So this is the ID of the document that we want to delete. So we need to get that by using this attribute data hyphen ID. So back over here, I'm going to say const ID is equal to event.target.get attribute. This is a method to get the attribute from an element in the DOM and we want the data hyphen ID attribute. So once we have that, we can actually delete that document from the database. And the way we do that is by saying db.collection and we want the recipes collection. And inside that we want to get an individual doc. So we say dot doc and we pass in the ID of the document we want from the Firestore collection. And that is going to be this document with this ID. So we pass in an ID and it gets a reference to that document stored in the database. Then we just use the delete method to do that. Okay. So then now if I save this, go back to the service worker. And again, I'm going to have to increase this to V6 because we've changed it. Save it. Go over to the application service worker, skip waiting, and then we're going to refresh over here. And now if I click on this, then it should delete it from the database. Now we see no change here. But if we go to the database, we can see now we only have three. It's deleted it and Ninja Noodles is no longer there. We'd actually have to refresh completely to see this update over here. Now, if I do that, we don't see the Ninja Noodles anymore. So what I'd like to do is actually react to when something is deleted here, it updates our UI. So we need to go to our db.js file to do that. Up here, remember, when something is added, we react by calling this function, but when something is removed, we don't react at all yet. So what I'm going to do now is actually call another function from here that we're going to create in a minute. And this is called remove recipe. And inside here, I'm going to pass in the ID of the recipe that we want to remove. So change, which is the object we get back here. Remember when there's a change in the database, the change dot doc to get the document reference dot ID. So this is the ID of the document which has just been removed and we're passing it into this function which we now need to define over in UI.js. So down here, let's say remove recipe from DOM and then we'll create a new function. This is going to be called remove recipe and set it equal to this function. We'll take in the ID as a parameter because we pass that in from over here, remember this ID. And then what we want to do is search the DOM for a div, a recipe that has this ID up here. So the way we're going to do that is by saying const recipe is equal to document.query selector. And we want to find a div with this class recipe, but also with this attribute. Now, the way I'm going to do this in here is by using a template string to backticks because that means we can output an ID variable. So we're going to look for dot recipe. That's the class. Then we're going to use square brackets to say we're going to also look for this class that has a data hyphen ID attribute equal. And then we want to output the ID in the dollar and then curly braces like so. So this right here is an attribute selector in CSS. When we use square brackets, it looks for this attribute, which has this value. OK, so now it's going to get us a reference to that recipe with the ID that we want to delete. And all we have to do now is say recipe dot remove. This is a DOM method to remove an element from the DOM. So this should all work. Now, UI.js is in this cache right here. So we need to update this to V4 for this to work and save it. Now, if we come over here, go to application, skip waiting and refresh. And now hopefully, cross your fingers, this should all work. So let me delete this. And that didn't work. I had to refresh then to actually see that change. And I think it's because inside our cache, we've not updated the DB file because we actually called this function right here. So yeah, we need to update that in the cache as well. So let's change this to v7 and save that and then come back over here now go to service workers skip waiting and refresh and now if we delete something again cross your fingers let's hope this works this time delete and now it goes so it updates in the database and because we have a listener set up to listen to those changes it removes it from the dom as well 
Now, what I'm gonna do is just add in something else. What have I got over here? Ninja soup. So I'll just say ninja smoothie again. And I'm gonna add in banana and orange and lemon. Press add so we get that back. Now what I'm gonna do is go offline and see if this behavior still works. So click offline and refresh. And now if we try to delete something like Ninja Smoothie, it's gonna go. Because like I said, Firestore under the hood is leveraging indexed DB so that all of the queries are interacting with this now and everything is still working the same locally when we're offline. Now, if we go to the database, we don't see it deleted yet. But the minute that we come back online, if we go to service workers and then uncheck that, refresh, then we can see that that gets deleted. So it's syncing up in the background again. So everything now is always kept up to date and fresh. Even when we go offline and then come back online, it's seamless. The user doesn't know otherwise. And this isn't just good for offline behavior. It's good even when we're online because if we already have data stored locally, Firestore doesn't always need to reach out to the real database for it. It can just reach out locally for it in the browser database. And this could speed up the app and improve performance. So now we have it, offline mode for assets like pages and images and CSS, and also offline mode for dynamic database data as well.